Hi, I'm Dennis Wade, and we're at Storage Visions 2013 in Las Vegas, uh, which is in conjunction with a consumer electronics show, which is the largest consumer show, I think, in the world. And I have with me uh, Margaret Dawson with uh, Simform, and uh, their company is, is developing some unique technology in uh, cloud, in looking at the backup cloud, and looking at uh, personal storage, and how the data is stored. And I'm going to let Margaret talk a little bit about uh, the company, the, f the market focus of the company, the current technology, and perhaps a little bit where she sees her, this industry going in three to five years. Margaret? Thank you very much, Dennis. So we started this company because fundamentally we saw an issue with cloud storage and the economics around it. So people were able to go out and buy a one terabyte drive for $100. But if you wanted to take that same terabyte and put it in the cloud, it could cost anywhere from several hundred to a thousand to several thousand dollars per month. And so we started to look at why was that? You know, what, what was that cost disparity? Where was it coming from? And it was coming from the need for all cloud storage providers to use centralized infrastructure to store your data. So even though from a user's perspective they're putting it up in the cloud, it's going to a data center in a server to be stored so you can access it later, right? You're just having to use the internet to send it there. And infrastructure is very expensive, um, especially centralized infrastructure. So we started to look at that and realize that in that infrastructure and on devices all over the world, people were barely using the capacity, the storage capacity that existed. There was this huge amount of excess capacity. You've seen that, right? Um, and if you talk to, you're guilty of that. Yeah. Well, most people don't even know what they have. If you if you open your laptop and said, you know, what, what's your storage capacity? They'd be like, I don't know. You know, I've I've got everything stored. Until you, hit the bump. Until you hit the bump, right? But most people are running anywhere from you know 30 to 50 percent. Maybe. Even enterprises rarely go over 50% because they have to have capacity for peak times, right? So it's irresponsible for them to go over. So we started thinking about how do you tap into that excess capacity and allow people to have an affordable way to back up their data. And what we're looking at is really data protection. So it's not primary storage where you need something you need to access right away. It's how do I make sure my data is always there and it's never going to be lost. Well, you mentioned cloud backup. So it's cloud backup. It's backup disaster recovery, it's sometimes called, right? And we're going after specifically what I call the digital savvy consumers. So these are guys that, you know, and, and I say guys literally and figuratively because it's usually men, you know, 18 to 45 or 50, um, up through small business. Um, so 50 employees and under is kind of our sweet spot now. And we plan to go up the stack later, but this is, you know, as we're proving this out. Um, and so everyone contributes a little bit of that excess local drive space, and they get in turn secure, free cloud backup. So that's that's really how it works. So, uh, in that case, uh, how does your business model work itself in terms of uh, the data is essentially free, but you're offering a lot of infrastructure technology in in, in allowing them to do that? Where does your revenue stream come from? How do we make money? While we're all here, um, so there's a few different ways. Um, we say in our system you can pay with bytes or you can pay with bucks. So if they contribute, they're paying with bytes. They get a credit with bytes, right? Exactly. Um, but many people pay still with bucks. So they pay 15 cents per gigabyte. Maybe they don't want to contribute or they don't know how to contribute or it's just too scary for them or whatever it is, right? Um, and so they still pay dollars. We also have support plans. Uh, we use a lot of IT resellers that resell our, our thing or build it into a bundled data protection solution. Um, and so we have a reseller program that also drives revenue. Um, and then longer term, our strategy is we are building the world's largest virtual data center and that capacity can then be monetized. So we're a young company. We're three years old. So we're really building out this massive data center. And then you start looking at competing with like an S3. And so there's multiple monetization avenues that we can take. And you must essentially have a backup of a backup if you're using a lot of these bits and pieces on other systems. Uh, in case one of those systems goes down for some reason and one of your clients needs the data that might be on that system, even as a backup, you apparently have uh, additional protection on that. We do, but I want to be clear that we're not storing that in any centralized infrastructure. So we have no data center of our own. But what we do is we build in redundancy as we're processing your data. So um, in a real simple way, let's say you have some folders that you want to back up to the cloud, right? So you pick those folders. Before it leaves your device, first we chop it into blocks. And then we encrypt each block with its own random encryption key. And then each of those blocks is further shredded into what we call fragments. Um, and those fragments... Right, and when we do that fragmentation, 
an additional 33% redundancy is added. So there's all these parity bits, and that's for each block. So if you think about it, there's a whole lot of copies that are going out, and they go out over these parallel internet connections. So it's really fast, and they're all protected. It's Well, it's, in, it's inoperable little bits by the time it goes out there, right? I mean, someone would literally have to know, you know, every 96 parallel internet connections and where all they sat. And is we most of our secret sauce is in the random placement algorithms um, that how things are placed across the across the network. Yeah, very interesting. I thank you. I, and, and it looks like is that uh, currently in the U.S. and expanding, or uh, you know, because it's a it's a worldwide demand. I think. It's a worldwide demand. So we are currently in 160 countries. So be, it's the internet. So we don't care where you are. Um, you know, as long as you've got decent bandwidth, which a lot of countries do. So I, you know, bandwidth is really the biggest obstacle to cloud adoption overall, uh, and we're no different from that. But um, yeah, we have tens of thousands of users. We have over seven billion fragments in the network right now, um, and some of our biggest countries, uh, you know, we have a lot in Latin America, uh, Brazil, uh, Peru, uh, the Netherlands. I was just talking to a gentleman from Denmark where we have a lot of users in Denmark. So uh, it's it's literally all over the country. We have a couple of very small islands in the middle of the ocean that I don't know what they are, but I want to go visit that customer really badly. There's like a, we have a, we have like a node map, you know, on our wall and there's these, these nodes right in the middle of the ocean. I'm just like, oh, really, it's a boat maybe or something. I don't know, but I want to go to that customer. How do you market the product now that you're talking about all these 160 countries around the world, uh, and you're fairly small and three years old, uh, how does the word get to the customers that then come to you and say, I need to solve a problem? Yeah. Well, marketing now, as you know, is mostly online. So we do a lot of work with our website and with uh, search engine optimization. Um, we go to a lot of these shows just, you know, from an informational standpoint. But from a global perspective, it's really people hearing about us, um, videos like this, interviews like this, making yourself accessible. We just get out there and we do a lot of content generation development blogs um, and a lot on our website. Um, and we've done very well. We've actually, social media has been another huge avenue for us. So we're very um, uh, guerrilla, I guess, in our marketing and very viral and very social. Yeah, and that's the way it works when you're a startup. No, I think that's what it takes, and I think your presence at the conference was very enlightening to a lot of people. Uh, we had at this conference, I think Tom said, something like six to 700 people total in and out. So it was a large audience, and as you say, to try and reach those people, this is one of the ways to do it. And uh, Margaret, I thank you very much. It's been very enjoyable.